Hey, Kai, thanks for doing this again. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so you know what? I'm, 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 I, I just wrote down three questions as we last spoke. So right now we're doing Dominant Species, which was a game Chad did how long ago? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. Okay, so go ahead. So I I don't remember. It's been years. I think it was like 2011, 2012 when that came out. That long ago, eh? It's been a while, yeah. And it's it's a how many player game? The original was up to six, I think. And does every single player add an extra layer of time? Yes. Because um, I hear it's a long game. Yes, it is. Now... This marine species, th th this marine game, th th could you could we call it an expansion or no? No. So this is a totally different game. It's a redesign. Of, he wanted to do an expansion that included, we tried to fit the marine life into the original and it didn't fit. So he always planned on doing something with that. And when we got the feedback from the original game, he took that into consideration as well as trying to, you know, advance his craft with all the stuff that he was learning. So, um, and then other games that we liked, you know, other mechanics that he fell in love with over the years, uh, all fed into what became DS Marine. And um, is, is this a shorter game? And the, the only reason why I'm asking is just for stats purposes. Is this a shorter game? Yes, it is. Uh, how many players? Up to four. Can it be played solo? Yes. I don't know how off the top of my head, but uh, I believe, I, you know what? I would have to go back and look. That's okay. It's okay. And and how much of this design had Chad completed? Before he passed all of it. Oh, okay. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're developing it? Yes. Yeah. I had to finish the final examples of play. And um, we were just waiting for artwork, but the initial design, the initial development, and all the play testing was all done before he was even diagnosed. So this one's been finished for a while. Okay, so you were involved in that fit in, in, in this game since its inception. Yes. Okay, so you know this game. You know this game inside out. You would think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know what. Uh, Talk to me about this game like I don't know anything about it. What is this game about? Why why Marine and why not the uh, whatever? Why Marine and why not the uh, whatever? Go ahead. Well, because we'd already covered the land animals. Right. You know, we had the other game, so they had their day. And uh, he'd wanted to explore some other options. And we had wanted, we had tried to fit in fish. We tried to fit in crustaceans. Um, at one point we were goofing around and we were trying to include aliens just to be weird. Um, but it didn't fit in the original game. So he had just said, okay, we'll reserve that and see what comes of it. So this is kind of the other half. It, but it, it plays out. It's a totally different game in the sense that instead of doing all your pre-planning the way you do with the original dominant species, you have that whole action display where you pre-plan your turn. And then once all the pawns are in place, then you enact all those actions. This is a place your pawn, do the thing immediately. So that kind of flow sped up the decision process, but he restricted instead where you could place your action pawns. So you still have that tough choices thing to make because where you place your pawn affects where you can place your next pawn on the board. So you end up with tough choices of, I really need to do this thing now but that cuts out my ability to do something else in the same round. 
And okay. so this th this is a standalone game. You don't need dominant species. I, I'm I'm trying to look for that the complete. Dominant species. That, that that's what it was called. There it is. Dominant yep. species. So you don't need dominant species to play this game, or do you? Not at all. No. Okay. No, they're two completely separate games, and the card game, dominant species card game, is again completely separate from both of these. And uh, is this a huge game? Huge in terms of lots of components. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a big board, four player cards. Um, all the other components fit within the board, but it's a it's a pretty good sized board. And I see, I, I see you've got, um, you've got like dinosaur, uh, ichthyosauruses and all that. Uh, are, are, are we going back in time and then evolving as things go on? Or are we, are we just in the, for lack of better word, Cretaceous period? Yeah, you're, you're back in the prehistoric again. Just like the original, you're waiting for the asteroid to come. That's the end of the game cycle again. So we're, we're back prehistoric. So similar time period to the original game. It's just that you've moved off the land and, and back out to the water. Okay, so the asteroid comes and wipes us all out so nobody wins. Is that what it is? Well, you got to be in the best position to survive that asteroid. That's what you're shooting for. Right, but you're going to die anyways, right? Well, not everybody died. Some of us are here, right? You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> okay, so. Um, I'm trying to be that guy. Do you have do you have any prototypes that you can show us? No, unfortunately. Oh, I can't believe I did this. Somewhere in the move, I have misplaced our original. We actually had a, a professionally printed playtest board. We had the cards professionally printed. I have all the cubes. We had the rule book professionally printed as it was at that point. It was still incomplete because um, the examples weren't in there. But we had gone to the, the expense and time of having all of that professionally printed to do our playtesting on. I have no idea where it moved to after, because I had to move right after he passed. Yeah, I understand. I I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I'm sorry. Oh no, it's I. I have I've torn the house apart. I've torn my storage unit apart. I I don't know if it like because when I moved, there was a, a number of boxes that were labeled for uh, taking for donation. So okay. after all the household label boxes got moved into the house, what was left on the truck was supposed to go off to get donated. And I don't know if there was one more box. No way. Off the truck. I don't know. I was not, to be honest, I was not in my right mind at the time. I thought I was doing okay. But looking back on it, not so much because it was only, you know, it was a few weeks after he passed. No, I, I understand. Know. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. I, I just it, It's funny. It's one of those things. It's that or it's still in my storage unit. I just can't find it. And I'll find it a year from now after I have a real copy. Because that's how that works for me. But I looked for it, and I I can't find it. But it was beautiful. <laughs> so now, so now, how are you gonna pitch? How are you gonna pitch this game to GMT if you don't have the prototypes and all? Oh, they've already they've had it for years. They've, they've oh okay, so we're safe. Oh yeah. Oh cool. Okay. Yeah, we've got all the digital files. Uh, they've seen the files. They've actually seen the physical copy because we took it down uh, back in 2018. We took it to a GMT weekend down at the warehouse. So other people got to see it, got to play it. Um, it got spoiled that weekend when we were there. It got posted okay, online. Okay. So, yeah. So it was out there. People knew about it. And people had seen it. GMT okay. had already accepted it. And it's on the P500. We're, like, way over our numbers and, and heading off to the printer soon. Yeah. I, th I uh, Yeah. I mean, I, it ha is it on its a P500 right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're way over the numbers. So it's it got bumped into the queue. We've finished artwork about two weeks ago. We got the final art in. Um, the graphic layout team has finished their placement of all those graphics back into the rule book to replace our playtest images. And I am doing final proofing today. Actually, that's what I've been working on since right after breakfast. And uh, who's the artist? Uh, cover art, I believe, was Eric Williams again. But the main art for the game was done by Chechu Nieto, who did the original. Well, not the original. The reprint. Sorry. Okay. Uh, the species. So that, that cooler, slick art that looks so fabulous. Not the primitive art that we did for the original one. Right. Which I like. But Chechu did the second printing for us, which was fabulous. And so Chad asked if we could use him again. And he was available. It just took a while because he's very popular. And um, uh, and before, before it's out of P500, we're talking how much time? Um, we're going to print pretty much as soon as I get done with proofreading today or tomorrow 
and then it's four to six months in the queue and you know printing in China and then taking the slow boat back. So we're somewhere between four and six months from release. Okay, I mean, um, uh, people in the chat, which Kai, I call them the peanut gallery, but uh, but they're, they're they're cool about it. If you have any questions, it's time to ask now. As I said, I wrote three questions down for this for this interview because I wanted Kai to. To, to show us the prototypes, but as, as, uh, <laughs> I don't, I, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, okay, Kai, uh, to be honest, I've never played Dominant Species. I have it. I want to play it. Um, I know it's not a solo game. Is that right? Right. And uh, I know it's a six hour game. Is that right? Uh, it depends on how many players and how much analysis paralysis you will allow in the game. Oh my God. <laughs> If you get a player who's prone to that, yeah, I could take No, a no. But when we played with our group at home, one, I mean, we were all so used to the game because we'd been in it since the the, the playtest uh, version was built. But we could play, four to six of us would knock out a game between three and four hours. Okay. Because if somebody sat there and was like really brain burning and you were yeah, watching yeah, the smoke yeah. come out of their ears, Chad would start poking them. <laughs> He'd start prodding them along. You know, you're taking up time. He'd start making comments. He'd tease them, give them a hard time until they made a choice and move the game along. So games at our table always moved along. We we did not put up with AP much. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so would you consider this a Euro game? Yes. Are there any war game mechanics in them, Chad being a war gamer? Actually, you being a war gamer. Yeah, true, both of us. Um it's got a war game feel because it does have competition and depending on your play group, we, we played games with some folks and it was totally a Euro the whole way through. And we've played this game with war gamers and it is a cutthroat knife fight in a phone booth war game. So it depends on the group you play with and it depends on the actions you choose. You, you can run it either way. So is there any alliances to be made and then you backstab the guy you made an alliance with in the game? You can, yeah. Oh my God. There'll, there'll be a position where it's to your advantage to work with somebody at a certain point. And after a while, that advantage kind of disappears and your advantage is to go somewhere else or to, you know, compete them out of an area. And you just, you got to do it. So. And you had mentioned an aliens game, Dominant Species Aliens, which which appeals to my sci-fi mm -hmm. brain. Is that going to happen? Probably not, because I don't think I've got enough material to pull together into that game. We had joked about it before. Um, he was always trying to squeeze what he called the grays into any kind of game he never did. But we'd always we'd always consider them as a faction, you know, as off the start when everything was on the table and all options were open. Grays were often in the mix when it came to anything fantasy or Euro based or anything like that. And they they always got the axe. But he tried, and uh, I don't know if at some point I'll be able to pull them into one of the games. I've got a, I've got a backlog of stuff that we were working on. So. Now I know you have you have a gaming group, right? That you usually play with. Pre COVID, yeah. Oh, pre COVID, yeah. So what happens now? Uh, well, right now between my settling in and adapting to single life and all that nonsense and then not being able to get around anybody, we haven't done any gaming. Um, most of my gaming partners have family that they can, you know, who are within their bubble, so they're still gaming. But um, for me, actually my phone is parked up against my first two solitaire games that I bought that are both still in shrink wrap, but um, so I'm, I'm venturing into solitaire games. You just bought two solitaire games for the first time. Yes. Well, and I they... had a partner before. Why would I ever play without him? No, so I understand. I understand. So I've never played any solitaire games. So, so what'd I you buy? Up, I what'd you buy? Navajo Wars by Joel Toppin. Joel Toppin. That's a GMT game. And I also picked up Solitaire Caesar from White Dog Games. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I yeah. want that game. Yeah. Rick Young recommended it to me, a great friend of mine. And he's like, you got to get this. And we'll talk, I'll talk you through it on the phone. <laughs> and I haven't taken it. I bought the game, but I haven't had the time yet to pull it out of shrink and actually take a look at it. But soon. 
And you know, since we're in that in, in that conversation, which we're gonna go back and forth because because oh look, there's a red squirrel. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I got James. James asking question here. Can you see that? Uh, not without my glasses. You want me? I could read it for you. Uh, let's see. Have you been doing any development for any other games? For a particular, okay. Um, always with GMT because I I work for them. Um, but yes, I am working with other designers. I'm writing a rule book right now for a game. Um, I just finished up working with John Butterfield on the expansion for Space Corp. Nice uh, ventures. The, yeah, I, that, you're, the, uh, you're, the, you're the developer on that. Chad and I did a development on the initial game, and uh, he brought in another developer I didn't have time or the mental bandwidth when he was working on the expansion. So he brought in a, another developer, uh, and I jumped on board toward the end of that project to make sure that the new project is consistent with what we saw in the old one. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, was, that was fun to work with John again. Um, so I worked on that. Um, I do work with uh, Mark Herman. Um, I've done a couple of projects with him. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, hold, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Look at my hands. My look at my hands. Bloody hell. Okay, John Butterfield. Let's. Uh, how was it working with that rowdy guy? <laughs> I adore John. I do. He's a great, Who he's very sharp. <laughs> he. Uh, I mean, he's not only really a smart guy. He's he's fun to play with. Yep. He's funny. Great guy to spend time with. Um, just a, he's sarcastic. A, a wealth of information. Um, he and Chad hit it off. So just sitting back and watching the two of them interact was always fun because they were both very sharp and very knowledgeable. So you're watching two guys at the top of their game, throwing out ideas at each other about what about this? What about that? Can we try this? And they were trying to, you know, they were working on collaborative ideas for things or just talking game design in general. And it was fascinating just to be a fly on the wall. Yeah. So, yeah. But great yeah. job of work. Now, Mark Herman, you know, I, I met Mark Herman once for a week and um, it, it, look, I, I just love the guy, first of all, because he's Mark Herman. So I, I he was on my shelf since I was 15 years old. I asked him if I can call him uncle because he's been there, oh, there all my life. And he actually said, yeah, oh, cool. but, yeah, well, whatever. And how was it to work with Mark? I enjoyed it. He, he knows what he wants but allows a measure of creativity. So he's like, this is what my end game, I want to look, you know, I want the product to have this look or this feel or this, you know, this is what I'm after. But then how you get there is entirely up to you. Oh, that's cool. So he was very flexible to work with. And, um, and he trusted me at a point where I wasn't really proven at rules writing. I had been working with Chad for years and learning his style of rule writing, but nobody else had actually said, here's a project, do your thing. And so he trusted me with that process. And, um, and I think it worked out very well. Now, now you, uh, Kai, um, obviously you, you being married to, 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 to Chad and playing all these games for, for the, your whole life, basically. Mm -hmm. um, obviously you pick up on stuff, right? Obviously. I do. And um, I, I've asked you this in, in our previous interview, and I'm getting away from Marine, uh, whatever, but we'll, we'll, we're going to get back. Um, do you have any plans on, on, on starting your own game from scratch? And if so, what's it going to be? Well, I've got one that's published. Oh, okay. Wait. What? Yeah, I did a kid's game years ago um, when Chad and I were first together and I was learning to do development and learning the intricacies of design, which is what he did versus development, which is what I was working on. He gave me a homework assignment. He said, keep it simple, but design a game so that you would understand the cascade effect of changes. So you make one change to one component and then watch how that cascades out to how many other rules that then further cascade down to other elements of the game. So I designed a small children's game where you, um, you're basically rescuing animals that have been taken into a dragon's lair. The dragon came and raided the king's zoo, took all the animals off to her cave. You gotta go get them back. Simple little kids game. You run around the, the cave and you grab animals and you take them out. Um, but in doing so, not only did I learn the lesson that he was trying to show me, 
um, I also actually came up with a game that worked. So I put it into a game competition, um, took a judge's award for creativity or something nonsense. And, um, and then it got picked up and printed um, for about a year or so. And then when they quit printing it, the rights came back to me. So I'm going to do something with that. And see so, I get well, I mean, I mean, GMT is listening. I'm telling you. <laughs> Look, if, they, if, if, John, if John Paniski, if John Paniski could do uh, leaping lemmings, I mean, give me a break. <laughs> Not that it's a bad game. I have it. I have it. It's a good game. But anyways, yeah. that, that was um, say what? That was done by Rick Young. Leaping lemmings. Yeah, wasn't it? I no, John Paniski. John Paniski. Well, hold on. Hold on. Go pull it off the shelf. It might be both of them. Where's mine? Well, you're half right. It's it's it was it's, both Rick, of them. it's Rick Young and John Paniski. So it was okay. Because I remember working with Rick at uh, Consum World Expo when he and Chad came up with uh, the pellets. Lemon chow. Uh, yeah, well, okay, uh, Kai, getting back to Marine. Yes. Um, um, talk to me about this game, please. Uh, I, like I said, I, I, I wanted I wanted people to ask questions and, and they, they, they do have questions here. Uh, oh, look, here you go, bang. In, in uh, Dominant Species Marine, did Chad add in various depths of pressure for different species? No. No. We kept it fairly simple um, in the way that the original game was. You lay a tile and, you know, it's got certain value. And then depending on the elements that you place around it, um, feeds your animal's needs or not. So in that sense, we tried to keep it as, as very simple. But... The um, the way that the different terrain types and the different depths are expressed is just in the, the different types of tiles themselves. You know, so there's land around the edges, you know, obviously your beaches and, and cliff fronts and stuff that, that front onto the ocean. But then there's coral reefs, there's the uh, ocean depths, the sea mounts, um, hydrothermal vents, things like that make up the different tiles. So in that way, they represent the different depths, but without any actual game effect you know, based on pressure or lack of sunlight or anything like that. Now, Kai, it, it, it just hit me as you were talking about it and, and, and in detail and all that, blah, 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 blah. And it's not as simple as, obviously, it's not as simple as this, right? Correct. All right. Now, who in the right mind would make a game like this? No one. <laughs> <laughs> game designers are not in their right mind. Yeah, yeah, it's... It, I mean, yeah. seriously? And then for some reason, the mechanics are good, the game is good, and then it becomes a hit. I mean, you feel this is going to become a hit? I think this is better than the original. Seriously? I okay. It, I, I do. I, I was skeptical at first because I was like, nothing is ever going to replace Dominant Species in my heart, right? It was like the pinnacle game that he did. Even though he's a war gamer, I yeah. still feel like that was the peak. And Sincerely. He was, he was not going to beat it. and then. We talked about it. We started fleshing it out. He worked on the mechanics and stuff while I was at the office during the day. I'd come home. He would download basically all of his information to me. And I was like, mm, I'm still not buying it. I still, I think it's going to be a good game, but it's not going to be like the game. And then we played it the first time. And our friends, Mark and Bob were in on the first game. It was the four of us and we played it. And afterwards we always had a, a bull session where we'd sit around and talk about what we liked and didn't like. And the three of us sat there staring at him for a couple of minutes and he started getting a little squirmy and he's like, what? And we're like, we got nothing to say. This is better. <laughs> this is, then how did you, we were just baffled as like, damn it. Because I really wanted to keep dominant species as like the pinnacle of my game experience with him. And I do honestly love this one better. It plays smoother. You still have the tough decisions to make, but it doesn't, not that the original ever dragged out for me because you always feel so immersed in it, but this one just flows. And because we knew the concepts from playing the old game so much, jumping into this felt familiar, but at the same time different and better. And so I was like, 
damn it, I like this one better. I was really upset about it actually the first couple of days. It, it bothered me that it had bumped dominant species from the top of my list. And and who, who who's this going to appeal to? I would think Euro gamers at large. Not just people who like the original dominant species, but the people who tried it and had complaints about it because they didn't want to be checking dominance all the time or they felt it took too long or they didn't like the pre-planning phase because it by the time you get done pre-planning everything, when you start executing it, your plans have changed and stuff. And this game doesn't play that same way. So all of those complaints have been addressed. And so I think this is a totally different experience in that regard. So people who would have passed on the original game, I think would still like this new one. Now, I, I know, I know, Kai, look, I love GMT. Gene, Gene is, I mean, Gene, Tony, uh, Mark, these guys are all superstars, okay? But there's a limited, when it comes to Euro games, there's a limited amount of visibility that they have because there are war gamer, they're a war gamer company, right? right. Now, uh, and, and, and I don't know, I'm, uh, but, but please, um, I, I don't want to be uh, whatever, I, I got no words, but why wouldn't you approach, it being a Euro game, why wouldn't you want to approach a Euro game company? Because Chad's loyalty was to GMT. Okay. He, he did his homework before his first game was published. He liked their philosophy. He liked their style of workflow and uh he respected the designers who were working under them at the time and the quality and, and yeah and the quality and their consistency and he actively kind of hunted them down we went to a convention where we took the prototype of combat commander it was called uh company commander at the time and we played the bejesus out of it and everybody who came by our table we said if, if you like this game go up to the GMT booth and tell whoever's there that they need to come check this game out. And we did that every day of the convention, every game that we played, anybody who stopped by to talk to us, we told them, if you like the look of this, go up to the GMT booth upstairs on the sales floor and tell whoever's at the booth how much you like this game. And we just kept sending people up. And by the end of the weekend, we got a message that Roger McGowan, who was working the booth that weekend, had wanted to talk to us. Well, of talk course. to Chad. Of course, so, uh, but he had he had targeted them, had pinpointed them specifically um, as a company that he wanted to work with. And then after working with Gene and, and the other guys the first time, he decided that was it. He was home. And so he gave them first right of refusal on all of his games. And since his games sell, I don't think they've refused any of them. No, of course not. And, and, and you know what? I mean, I understand because um, Chad seems to be. And a game designer is an artist, as far as I'm concerned, okay? And um, artists have certain criteria that they're, they're not going to they're not gonna go below. So, whatever. He had GMT. And for me, GMT is one of the premier war gamer publishers because of professionalism, quality, uh, blah, 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 all that stuff. But in terms of money... Um, he could have approached Rio Grande games, man, with, with something like that. And I don't know how Rio Grande works as opposed to GMT, whether they would have said, okay, thank you for the, uh, the idea, but you're going to have to strip this down, strip that down or whatever. Um, but you would have made, if, if combat commander was, a, was, was at Rio Grande, it would have been like a memoir 44. Yeah. Now, did, did he wasn't concerned about that? He, he, that that he, wasn't he his, that was no. He wasn't in it for the money. He was in it for the craft. He loved designing. He started designing when he was a little kid. Mm. He would start taking game components from other games and you know grab two parts out of this game, a board off of that game, some cards out of another game, and he'd make his own. And then he would teach it to his cousins, and they would play that all summer. So he started this very early, and it was just his passion. And GMT took that passion very seriously and he treated it like an art and my having a stable, well-paying office job gave him the liberty to work on what he did. So when he got laid off from his job, 
um, because we both worked when we were first together. Um, he got laid off and I took a look at our budget and I said, okay, if we cut the TV, the second car, the added insurance, the, you know, we cut all these other things out of our budget. I can carry us for two years. You have two years to get your games out the door or you're back peddling your resume around. He had combat commander out in the air. And, and the first game went well, and he was able to do that for a living full time from then on. So, thank God for you, Kai. He was never in it for the money. That's cool. That's cool. You're yeah. You're, you're like a, what, what? What do you call those people that support artists? Uh, you're a um, a patron. Oh a patron. <laughs> I, gave I had it, and you actually you 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 put tears in my eyes. Will you stop it? Stop it! <laughs> nope. No. Anyways, okay, let's get back to Marine. Um, uh, Dominus piece is Marine. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have any questions. Tell me something about Dominus Species Marine. You're going to love the artwork. I mean, if nothing else, if you don't like the game, if you can't stand <laughs> Euros, whatever, the artwork alone should sell a couple of copies because Cheshire does beautiful work. Well, I mean, I mean, is, is he the guy who did the... Um, the, the the box cover no i believe that was eric williams eric has been doing cover art for us um for quite some time but chechu does the the game board and the components and most of the material that makes it into the rule book so like the elements were chads and stuff but the the actual animals themselves the fishes and the cephalopods and all that he painted all those and then all the artwork that goes on the cards and i was so impressed because chad when he designed the cards originally we just do play test art because it's just us at home but he very excuse me very specifically picked out artwork that had a certain feel or a certain image that he wanted associated with that card and when he sent it off to Chechu, he said okay stick with this basic idea you know I, i've given you this image for a reason but within that you've got room to play you know with if it was just a basic fish you can pick whatever fish you want or if it was you know, a reptile eating a cephalopod, you know, you could choose how that battle plays out visually. Um, and so when I was proofreading the cards a few weeks ago, I went through literally card by card through the entire deck and was comparing the artwork of what we had sent in versus what he had painted and given back to us. And I was just floored. He stayed true. Every single card, he stayed true to Chad's vision. Now, you, his name is Chichu Nieto, right? Chichu Nieto, yeah. Yeah, is he Pat Metheny's percussionist? <laughs> Somehow is I he? Got that. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you because that's exactly his name? Is it really? Yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you, okay. it's probably Pat Metheny's percussionist. And then being in California, we're even narrowing it down to like for sure. Well, all I know about Chichu is one, he's fabulous. Two, he lives in Spain and he's an artist. So I don't know what he does on the side. Ask him. Ask yeah, him. I could. I'm going to flip out. But, anyways. Um, uh, is, is this Kai Jensen? This is a Kai Jensen, yes. You're Kai Jensen. And can I ask you how you were named Kai Jensen, or you don't want me to talk about that? No, it's okay. It's not my given name, it's a nickname. Uh, my dad is Swedish, so all of his kids got sweet. Well, most of his kids got Swedish first names. Mine just never fit me. My mom says she knew it right away that I wasn't going <laughs> to stick with that name, and so my name kind of morphed over the years. My my given name is in Swedish, it's Karen. In English, it's Karen. Um, but in elementary school, there were like seven Karens all in the same class. <laughs> okay. And no Carrie, so I'm like, okay, fine. I'll drop the N. I'll use Carrie for a while. Well, then I moved to um, middle school. Five Carrie, seven Karens, something's got to change. My grandfather <laughs> has jokingly called me Kai because it's a boy's name and I was a tomboy. And I'm like, fine, I'm dropping another letter. So I kicked the R out of the middle. It just became Kai. And that that has stuck. I've used that longer than than my real name. And it's just been that way ever since. Uh, yeah, well, it suits you very well. Well, thank you. Um, I don't know. I, you, you, I don't, what do I have tears in my eyes every time I talk to you? For God's sake, Kai! For God's sake. Uh, <laughs> um, it's a different I'm gonna say, than I do. 
Uh, for, okay. Um, when's this going to be out? Uh, four to six months, depending on, you know, how long the printing process takes during pandemic. So uh, at this point, as soon as I finish proofreading, which will be today or tomorrow, then um, Mark Simonich and Charlie Kibler, I think, are the two who are working on the, the rule book for me. They make those final edits. Um, I believe I get one final read through and then I sign off. So that'll be by like next week. And then it goes off to the printer. But then once they get through their printer queue, everything gets already stacked up ahead of it in line. Get through this and then they print them up, assemble them all, box them, put them on a boat and slowly float it across the Pacific. Months. Yeah, I get it. You know, it's, it's crazy funny. Crazy I, that out in 2020. I just did an interview with the... Uh, Charles Kibler, what a nice guy. What a humble, super nice guy. What a nice guy. Yeah. And but I haven't I haven't spoke to Mark Simonich yet. Is he a nice guy or is he one of those uh snot nosed kids? He is probably the nicest person I have ever met. No joke. No joke. I gotta get in touch with him, man. He's I gotta get in touch with him. I don't know. I don't you know, I know he does basically everything I have and and he's in he's in everything I have anything GMT for sure and and plus um I gotta get in touch with the guy I gotta research the guy uh, is he a dry man no he's he's very smart he's a little quiet um uh, very humble very smart um he can be funny can he but just he can but he's he's got a wealth of knowledge and a heart, just oh, for days. Fabulous guy. Okay. And, um, and very supportive because he's he's like Chad. Where he's got his craft. He's a designer and he does the graphics and he's very good at what he does. But he doesn't get full of himself, you know, just because he's got so many titles out and so much work behind him and all that. He is actually interested in teaching other people how to improve their craft. And I think that's where he and Chad really hit it off because no matter how well Chad was doing, he always had time to, you know, reach back behind him and pull up the next guy. And so he would work with other designers who were, you know, throwing out ideas on their first game. And so he's like, okay, some of the things you're talking about are the, the things that I did the first time too. And here's why you want to not do that. This is what I've learned. You know, this is, this is a pitfall and here's why and stuff. And, and just, you know, reaching back and helping the next guy up. And Mark does that cool. all the time. That's that's really nice. That's yeah. nice. Uh, okay. Uh, you know what, Kai? I have to ask you. I have to ask you. What are you watching on TV these days? <laughs> TV was one of the things we killed. No, not TV. When I say TV, I mean to say, what are you watching Netflix-wise, Hulu-wise, YouTube-wise? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um... I've seen a few movies recently. I mean, working two jobs, I don't have a whole lot of time. And I try to stay off electronics in the evening because it wrecks my sleep. Yes, so it does. I, do and, um, I watched The Favorite, which was a British production about Queen Anne. The and, Favorite? Uh, yeah, wasn't, The Favorite. Wasn't that with... Uh, uh, Rachel Wise. No, I'm yeah, thinking of the favorite, the favorite, the the swashbuckling guy uh, with with Harris with um. Oh my God! Okay, go on, please. I'm sorry. I don't know. It was Queen Anne and the Duchess of Marlborough, basically their story. That um, sounds riveting. It was actually really good. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Recently, I've watched a couple of romantic comedies just because I don't know. <laughs> I'm into those at the moment. I watch a lot of Disney. If given the oh, chance, so. come on, Kai Disney. I know that's so Disney. American. Oh my god, yeah. I missed a ton of Disney when Chad and I were married, so I had about 20 years of Disney to catch up on because he hates animation, he hates anybody who bursts into song in the middle yeah. of a conversation and yes. singing and dancing drives him crazy. Yes, so and if I put on any of those kind of things, he would get up and leave the room. Yes, and, and, and you know what? I, I think him and I would get along because I hate anybody singing to me. I, 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 I mean, don't give me no Broadway stuff except what I story. And um, but animation, there are some wicked animations like Miyazaki's Miyazaki, um, Howl's Moving Castle, Spirited Away, uh, 
Um, Princess Mononoke, have you seen any of those? I've seen Princess Mononoke, yeah. All right. Yeah, okay, yeah neither okay. here I were into the Japanese style of animation, but um, yeah, anything that involves singing and dancing and stuff, and he was right out, so there was most of your Disney. So because I didn't like watching movies without him, I skipped a whole lot, so I'm catching up. So, <laughs> well, can, can I suggest something? Sure. It's an it's an animation, and the music was done, if I'm not mistaken, from a, a, a guy in Quebec, and it's called the the Triplets of Belleville. Triplets of Belleville. Okay. Okay. It, I that's it. That's it. That that's all I have okay. to say. I will look that up. I also watch a lot of documentaries. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Port, I uh, find yeah. documentaries on bizarre subjects. So, yeah, well, um, bird whistling yeah, competitions. Yeah, and just like, random <laughs> stuff. <laughs> there's, there's a, a Kabuki kid um, uh, from the Peanut Gallery, uh, Porco Rosso by Miyazaki. Kabuki, I really love that movie. It's fantastic. Also, his lesser known movies like Porco Rosso, um, A Loop in the Third, and um, the, the the cat the cat got away or so, or the cat came back or whatever the hell it it's called. But anyways, <clears throat> okay, Kai. So I've gotten away from the subject like like I usually do, and you always make me cry. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> is there anything you want to say about uh, dominant species marine? Uh, order often, order early. No, it's backwards. <laughs> Buy one for your friends. No. <laughs> okay, so no, honestly, no. I think I think people who like a fast moving but brain burner style euro will enjoy yeah. this one. Um, if that's not your kettle of fish, skip it. But take a peek at the artwork anyway. Now, are you going to be sending this to the Dice Tower? Uh, you know, I hadn't even thought about that. I probably yeah. Should. You think about that. You think about that. Yeah, we had Paul Grogan take a look at it. Um, he did a playthrough with his Paul Grogan. Grogan. You mean the, the, the MMA guy? No, not Rogan. Grogan. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, and he uh, he actually had a good recommendation for Chad, something that he actually uh, upgraded in the game. So he's getting playtest credits as well. But um, real great guy. And he did a playthrough for us that he put on YouTube on his channel. Um, yeah, I should probably think about the dice tower. Yeah, no, of uh, course. And you know what, Kai? I I, I don't want to uh, uh, um, blow my own horn. But I, I am on the dice tower, the war gamer presenter on the dice tower. So I know Tom a little bit. So if you slip me a bit of cash, we I can I can. <laughs> Oh, bloody hell. I can't pay uh, you. You know there's a change shortage here in the U.S., right? A what? Change shortage. Change? No coinage. Shortage. Yeah, we're, we're running short on coins. How does, it, how does, how does, how does, how does that happen? happen? Too many people started a swear jar? I have no idea. You know what? But, I, you know, okay, okay. You want to talk about that? Let's talk about that. I'm Canadian, okay? Mm -hmm. I told you, you're more than welcome if you ever want to come over to the real side. Get we have the border somehow. Yeah, we got a basement apartment for you. It's dank and dark, but it's no problem. I'm not going to charge you much. Plus, your money's worth 30% more. But um, what what's going on, man? What's going on? Oh, I have no idea. There, it's so weird. Not having TV, I stay off the news. Right. So when I get up in the morning, five o'clock, I just skim the headlines and I'm just like crazy, 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 new <laughs> science, always that, and then crazy, crazy, and then politics. And I'm just yeah. like scrolling past it all. No, I do the same thing. I, I check BBC News and I see like crazy, 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 forget it. Oh, look, there's some house that was destroyed by alligators. That's what I check out. But other than that, um, I mean, Canada, Canada's not even allowing American citizens to cross the border, man. You should have made that decision years ago. 
We're not. <laughs> you don't want us up there. Yeah, but I mean, California, California is 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 um, it, it's a progressive state, right? Yes. And until you banned foie gras, something happened here because us. I'm in Quebec, and foie gras. I mean, I make my own foie gras from hand-fed geese or duck, organic, hand-fed people. Don't freak out, man. It's hand-fed, organic, free range. The ducks come to be fed to the farmer and they have one bad day. Yeah, but see, they're hand-fed, not horse-fed. Yeah, whatever. That's so what we're still in the foie gras. So I don't know yeah. if foie gras is, is happening. Uh, in, in California still, but anyways, because I know I know you guys are gastronomically educated. We think so, yeah. But I think well, Fogra is fabulous. I love it. I, I it's uh, you just look, can't buy it commercially, so. No, I mean, if you ever come over here, are you, are you know what kind? If we have, you're not a WBC person, right? Because you're in the you're in the West Coast, right? Right. I never had the chance to get over there. Uh, Chad and I had plans. We were going to hit the East Coast and like spend a couple of months and just kind of cruise up the coast and hit all the conventions and all that. It just never happened. Timing was never right. I got to get you some foie gras. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, with your American dollars, it would be it would be like cheap as hey. It's anyways. It would not go wasted. I'll tell you what. I'm telling you. I I, I mean. I just eat it with a spoon. But anyways, stop it. Yeah. Stop it, Kai. Stop it. No, we get good, fresh, pastured pork liver pate instead. Uh, so, you know, second best. Well, let but. me tell you something. I, 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 I sell organic meat, okay? And I sell organic chicken, organic pork, and organic beef. Angus fed. I mean, Angus beef, grass fed. We raise them. Uh, it's it's legit. It's unbelievable. They're in better shape than than me. Well, not maybe you, but than, than me. And um, but pork liver. There's not much pork liver because there's worms in pork liver. Ew! I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, they grind up well because apparently they're really tasty. <laughs> it's another source of protein, right? <laughs> Anyways, Kai, okay, so we've gotten away from everything. This bloody camera. Look at look, look, I'm fuzzy. I'm like a I'm like a outer limit person. No, okay, so right. circle back around. Worms. Now we're back to elements in dominant species marine. So Kai, thanks for doing this. I'm sorry I was so distracted. I'm sorry you made me cry. You always make me cry. I can't believe it. You're oh, the oh, only one in this world who makes me cry. You're the only one I have that effect on. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for sharing this marine dominant species. Uh, not an expansion. It's a standalone game. will be out in approximately four to six months. I know. I uh, If it's on the P500, then I, I for sure I've... Uh, I've, I've uh, not reserved it. I've P500'd it. Uh, I've pre-ordered it, whatever. Pre-ordered it, yeah. Well, thank you. And um, can I send you, when I get it, can I send you the booklet so you can sign it? And I'll even pay for postage return? You're crazy, but yes. <laughs> and um, all right, Kai. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. I, I hope we can do it again. I hope you have another game happening where you're involved, where we can do this again. And hopefully you have prototypes where um, I don't have to hustle for questions and stuff like that. Yeah, Sorry, <laughs> that there, yeah. yeah I, I can't believe I lost that game. No, um, man. You, it, it, it reminds me. It reminds me of a story of uh, some guy who had fish and chips in London. I think was pre. I don't know, pre World War One or something. And you know how they wrap it in newspaper, the fish and chips in London, and they give it to you. And so, anyways, this, he went and he happened to be a musician who knew his stuff and he went to get fish and chips and they wrapped it in, in this manuscript and they gave it to him. And he's eating fish and chips and it's it was a handwritten J.S. Bach uh, 
manuscript and he's like, oh, yeah. So maybe that's going to happen <laughs> with Marines. With Marine, with Dominus Species Marine. But anyways, I'm getting carried away. Okay. Kai, stick around. Guys, thank you very much for asking questions. You should have asked more questions. All right? What can I say? Kai, stick around. I'm going to do my um, my outro. And uh, I'll cry a little bit more later, okay? Okay. Why isn't it happening?